take a look at the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continued them throughout his life. Number two is the effect of company. Sometimes it has such a bad effect that those whom you think were brilliant become otherwise because they mix with people who are lowly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. On campus we will also find that there are so many different types of Muslims. Many different types. You have the Salafi, you have the Hanafi, you have the, you know, the, the people who believe in this direction and that direction. We need to know. We need to learn to tolerate each other. We need to learn to respect each other. We need not ask stupid questions. You know, sorry brother, what sect do you belong to? I think you're a Wahhab. No. Why do we want to say these words when the, the non-Muslims are enjoying dividing us and we help with them? Why? We need to realize what joins us is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's it. And believe me, we should learn our deen, we should know what it is. We may want to talk about it, we may want to enter into a discussion on our own as to what is supposed to and not supposed to be happening and so on, but we should never ever belittle someone because of what they believe. In fact, even the non-Muslims, we have a policy. What a beautiful policy. You have your faith, I have mine. It's different. I respect you with total disagreement, but the respect is there. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I respect you with disagreement. You need to respect me. In the same way you are free to be a gay or a lesbian, I am free not to be. So we might respect you as a human being but disagree with you totally on what you are doing. And you've got to respect us as human beings and possibly or probably disagree with us if you don't believe that what we are doing is right. This is the method and this is the mentality that we should be using in the non-Muslim world. We cannot apply the fatawa of some of the ulama who are sitting in the Muslim countries and dishing out fatawa without knowing what's happening on the ground in the non-Muslim countries. They come and they spoil the whole link we have with everyone around us and create a divide having never left the desert and Allah protect us. And I know it might sound a little bit hard but I'm speaking reality. I studied in Madinah Munawwara and I know what I'm talking about. So it's very important for us to know that this integration, this opportunity, whilst we are a student, to spread Islam will happen when you mix for the right reasons. Otherwise Islam is not going to spread. Not, not within us and not even outside of us. Within us meaning sometimes we become worse Muslims on campus because we've mixed with the wrong people. And what comes to my mind, I was in rural Zimbabwe just two days ago. We spent the three days of Eid al-Adha. Some of you might see some of the pictures on Facebook. We spent a few days of people out there in the rural areas dealing with the poorest of the poor on the globe. And when you look at them reading Salat al Asr, you know, you find a man who barely has clothing and he says, Sami'amu'amu'li man hamida. And you think to yourself, my brothers and sisters in England, some of them don't even read Salat. And here are people, no internet, no iPhone, no Blackberry, they don't even know what it's all about. You tell them Blackberry, they think it's a little fruit that needs to be eaten and they tell you black, no, it needs to be red. Allahu Akbar. Red berries and jellies. And with them, their salah is so, mashallah, intact. They concentrate. So what happened to us? We should be making use of technology to the limit, to the extent, but not at the cost of our deen and our basic beliefs. We need to use the internet, but not for pornography. I was reading an article, I don't know how true it is, that Muslims are the biggest governments when it comes to pornography. May Allah protect us. I hope that's not true. But if that's the case, what is happening to us? Allah says in the Quran, Islamic 
identity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. This is why I say, we are Muslim, we are proud to be Muslim. We have an Islamic identity and we are proud about that Islamic identity, even if it means in your name. I had a brother and his name was a long Muslim name, I'm forgetting it right now, but something like, you know, Abdul Khalid, for example. And after September 11 and after what happened and so on, he decided to change his name. Why? Because I am Abdul Khalid Muhammad. If I travel with this name, I'm going to be blocked. I told him, brother, don't do that. It's the biggest mistake. I said, what name do you have in mind? He said, they must call me Sam. Sam. I said, you know what's the meaning of Sam in Arabic? Something poisonous. Allah protect us. Poisonous. So why do you want to call yourself such a bad name? Don't worry. If they need to question you, they need to ask you, so what? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. We can make a change. You can be a person who is bearded. You can be the person who is in niqab. And you can still be the most polite and the most helpful to Muslims and non-Muslims. And you can smile at everybody and you can be known as a person who's made the difference. When I walked in here, those of you who don't know me, probably may have thought, I wonder who this is. I wonder what he's going to say. I wonder what type of a brain he has. I wonder what type of you know, person he is. But believe me, we all need to try to be the best to one another. Khayyun nas and khayyun nas. The best of people are those who are most beneficial to the rest of humanity, not just to the Muslims. And we need to know this. We're living in an environment that is non-Muslim. It's important for us to create that impact. The way we will do it is by mixing with them and wherever we can slip in a message, we slip it in. You know, we have people who help. They will volunteer, they will assist, and sometimes they will tell the truth, and sometimes lost property, they will return it, and you say, thank you very much, they will say, no, it's a pleasure, I'm a Christian. I don't know if you've heard that. I'm a Christian. I don't mean, Christianity prohibits me from doing, you know, this and that. Christianity encourages me to do this and that. They make it a point, I'm a Christian. I've never, ever heard a Muslim doing good and then say, no, brother, it's okay, I'm a Muslim. Islam teaches that, you know. There must be, but I haven't heard but I'm sure there is. The reason I'm saying this, I'm encouraging myself and yourselves to make it known. You don't need to compromise your hijab in order to do a good deed. Do it with that hijab. Do it with that beard, if it, if it be. Do it with that name of yours. My name is Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahman Muhammad Abdullah. What's wrong with that? Nothing. And what did you do when well, I just helped 20 non-Muslims, inshallah, you know, in the, in the orphanage here, and we donated something to someone. Allah, Allah, what's wrong with that? This is how we should be thinking, to be honest with you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us broad thinking. There is one problem. What is the problem? Many people have an idea in their mind, they have seen the path, but they haven't walked on it yet. A lot of people know what's right. As I said at the beginning, we know our religion, but many of us have not yet started walking on the path. You know, there is something known as Hidayah, guidance. Guidance is in the hands of Allah, definitely. But we need to make an effort. As the Quran says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيمَا لَنَكْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا It is those who struggle and strive to get closer to us, whom we shall guide to our ways, to the paths that lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to struggle and strive. Hidayah is basically divided into two categories. One is known as to be able to guide or to be guided to know, to know what the path is, that's one. And the other is that tawfiq, to be able to walk on that path. One is to know it and the other is to be able to walk on it. A lot of us know, but we haven't yet started walking, either because of laziness, either because of lack of willpower, either because of what is known in the Arabic language as that tasweef, meaning, you know, we're sitting back and being uh, procrastinating, so to speak. You know, we say, no, tomorrow I'll start, the following day I'll start, the next day I'll start. That's not good enough. We need to start now. One of the best ways of doing this is to be concerned to deliver the message to someone else. If you are concerned to deliver the message of Islam to someone else, one of the bare minimum profits of that will be that your own deen, inshallah, will be protected. If my aim is the sky, I reach the clouds at least, inshallah. And if I've got to the clouds, it's, inshallah, a prophet. 
So when we, when we tell ourselves, you know, I will learn the deen, I will practice and I will practice and so on, to me that's not good enough. That's just part and parcel of what we are meant to be doing. We are meant to be thinking, I am going to spread this. I am going to tell it to as many people as possible. What brought me from a corner of Zimbabwe? You know, Zimbabwe is not only far by kilometers, but even alphabetically, we are in Britain right at the top, B and Z is right at the bottom. SubhanAllah. And the code for it, for your information, is ZW. Right there. If you pick up any internet, you try it, and they give you a country, and then there's a drop down. You'll find Zimbabwe right at the bottom, mashallah. But what happened? We made sure that Britain was known as the United Kingdom to make it closer to us, <laughs> So now we've come and we've met, alhamdulillah, for the purpose of what? Just the deal. Just the deal, nothing else. I need, I was sitting here thinking, in 20 minutes I need to motivate myself to start with, to be a better Muslim and move one centimeter in Charma forward if that has happened, I've achieved. So I hope that everyone else can be as motivated or even more, inshallah. This deed is ours. If we don't hold fast to it and try to spread it to others, it is going to leave our hands and we will find others doing the job. Moments ago we had someone from Muslim Aid here. Moments ago we had another speaker here. And moments ago we were told that there is assistance that is required, either in the form of volunteering and so on. Remember one thing, if we don't volunteer or if we don't give our money, the work is not going to stop. It will continue with the money of other people. But we will have been blocked from the goodness. Let's understand that. I always tell people, when someone's intentions are not pure, when someone's wealth is not clean, when some, something has gone wrong somewhere down the line, Allah rejects a person sometimes in such a way that they feel that they're doing themselves a favor by not giving their money, not realizing it carried on without their money and even grew much more. But their money was rejected. Allah protect us. There is an example in the life of Rasulullah of this as well, where there was a man when he was told to pay the zakah, he didn't. And later on he wanted to give that and they did not accept it. Allah Allah. So what we need to realize, if we don't give our time, it's going to be wasted. If we don't use it properly, it's going to be wasted. If we don't give our wealth, we give it, the world will continue without our wealth. So let's spend our money, inshallah, in the right direction. Let's spend our health in the right direction. Let's spend our time in the right direction. And let's understand, all of us, we need to have a goal in life, an aim. And the primary aim should be, and if it isn't, we need to change. It should be to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately. That's the pleasure. That's what I should be aiming at. So we can be doctors and lawyers and accountants and earn and have this and have that and have your iPhone and Blackberry and what have you. And you know, have the Ferrari and the Merc and what have you and the S-Class and so on. No problem. But ultimately, always be conscious of the fact my aim is to please Allah. So you make use of all that and we constantly engage in repentance and we constantly walk on the path. You know there is a hadith, there are so many narrations and I don't wish to get into nitty gritty because mostly when we speak to young people, they like you to give them a message that is relevant and they don't like too many technicalities. They don't go away with anything. So I don't like to get into technical, you know, uh, description of this and that. We need a message. The message is just as when we are walking in a bush, which has, sorry for bringing the bush again and again, but I'm just coming from one, which has a lot of thorns and, you know, plantation that is like cactus and so on. How would we walk? We would ensure that we are not harmed by any of those plants or anything on the path. So if there is something harmful here, we move to the left. Something harmful there, we move to the right. Something out from this direction, we move again, and so on, until we continue walking. The same applies in our lives. Every day, there are certain things that are beneficial, certain things that are harmful. If we do not protect ourselves by moving just a little bit away from these harmful items, they may swipe us, and we may lose so much that a whole year might be gone without us having achieved anything. There are a lot of people who say, you know what, I want to turn from the brother, make dua for me, I want to turn. Make dua for me, I leave my smoking. I tell them, put a knife to your smoking. I like to use that word because it's sacrifice. Knife, the dead, sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was ready to sacrifice his son. It didn't make sense to him. It did not make sense to him or it will never make sense to any human being. For someone to instruct someone else to sacrifice their son, but he did it because he knew the source. Today we cannot put a knife to 
something that we know is bad for us. Gambling, alcohol, intoxicants, adultery, pornography, even smoking, whatever it is. I know I've categorized all of them together, but these bad habits, we need to put a knife. That is the sacrifice and see how we feel. And see the feeling within you of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing I can say to describe how you will feel or how you feel. Because the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is indescribable. You cannot describe it. You need to feel it. You need to go through it. You know there's a hadith which says, Iman has a halawa. Halawa meaning a sweetness. That sweetness, when it is tasted, there's nothing else that will ever taste sweeter. Nothing. Just like when you have, you know, a mug of coffee and someone's putting a little bit too much sugar in it and then you have another one with the right sugar right next to it. If you've taken one sip from this one, no matter what happened to the other one, it might be as you've been having it every day. For that day, you won't like it. You won't want to drink it because you've had something sweeter. And you know the rule. If you have ice cream immediately after that, you want to have something that's not very sweet, you won't enjoy it. It needs to be the other way around. So with us, we need to know this halawa of Iman. What is the halawa of Iman? And I will end with this hadith, inshaAllah. Seeing that no one has yawned yet, but maybe I might yawn just now. <laughs> the halawa of Iman, the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, ثلاثة من كنا فيه وجد بهن حلاوة الإيمان Three characteristics, three things. If they are found within a person, they get the sweetness or they will taste the sweetness through those things of Iman. What are these? أن يكون الله ورسوله أحب إليه مما سواه For Allah and His Messenger to be more loved by the person than anything besides them. Every one of us seated here, I guarantee you, we would love to please Allah, wouldn't we? Every one of us wants to be better. I know people who are hooked on drugs, but if you take that one bad habit out, they are better than some who are standing in the first of in Salah. I've seen that. I know of one man who gave up a habit of drinking after 65 years. And I always told him, Uncle, you were a golden man, you just keep this habit. And he was shocked, he says, you know, you're the first person who's actually coming to praise me. He's a drunkard, no. He's passed away now, Allah found him Jannah. He called me in the hospital in his deathbed, and he told me, I want you to send a bulk message to the whole community, to ask them, this man is passing away. If he has harmed you in his life in any way, please forgive him. He's on his deathbed. Wallahi, I sent the bulk message. And he told me that day he received about 400 calls, three days before he passed away. And people said, don't worry, don't worry. And to me, I said, Ya Allah, what a man. He was known in our community back in home. I see some of the brothers here also, mashallah, from Zimbabwe. And I'm sure they would know who he is, a very, very good man, but he had a bad habit. The reason I'm making mention of this is because we all sometimes are brilliant people. We all have very, very good qualities, but they are overridden sometimes by one bad habit. Throw it out and see how you shine. You know when you have a gem, we have diamonds back in Zimbabwe, some of the biggest deposits of diamonds, and people who don't know, they'll stumble across them and they won't even know you should have just picked it up, you could have afforded you know, a house in central London, mashallah. But they didn't know why. They don't know, it's just a little dirt on top of this. Once you shine it and polish it a little bit, you have a proper diamond. You have a proper diamond. The same applies, we all are diamonds. And we need to know, subhanAllah, that the paper's been torn on the left leg, telling me there's a few minutes left like this, mashallah. So, we need to know that we all have to polish ourselves. We need to love Allah and His Messenger more than anyone else, number one. Number two, and you hit Allah to the Lord, and I want to translate it slightly differently. We should love one another only for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the pleasure of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know a lot of you here, but Allah, there is a link. Most probably I would be ready to give my life if something had to go wrong. Allah, Allah, most probably. Why? We have a link of deen. I was telling someone, Someone mailed me some time back, a sister, and she said something and said something else, and she was questioning something that Allah has decreed and so on, and we ended up saying, you know, a few things, and it 
took her a little bit of time. And after that I said, you know what, sister, I want to tell you something. I don't know you. You probably may have disagreed with some of what I've said, but I want to tell you the link of Iman is there. If we were somewhere, and I see the Muslim sister being, you know, taunted or something, I would go as though, you know, she belonged to me totally and defend her. And I wouldn't even have known, and even after it was over, I probably wouldn't even have asked you, who are you? I've done my job and I carry on Allah's seed and that's it. SubhanAllah. That is supposed to be the brother of Islam, the sisterhood of Islam. We love each other for the pleasure of Allah. I want you to benefit, you should want me to benefit. In the same way I've seen the light, I need to want you to see the same light, if not a better light. And we need to exchange this. Today we're ready to know one another for business. If I am ready to benefit you a hundred thousand pounds, I will be your best friend. I will be your business partner, you invite me home and introduce me to everyone. Why? Because a hundred thousand pounds, what Allah has in store is far more important than that. So why don't we develop a certain type of link? The last point that is mentioned in the same hadith is أن يكره أن يعود إلى القفر كما يكره أن يلقى في النار. A person should hate. Again, I'm translating it a little bit differently. A person should hate to go back on their achievements, on their spiritual achievements, in the same way they would hate to be cast into the fire. So, if you've achieved spiritually, if you've gone forward, say a person is only needing three salat a day, that's bad. But if they go down to two after that, it's very bad. It's even worse. You've come to three, now you should get to four and then get to five and be If a person's been reading five and then they go back, it's very bad. So if we have a habit within us that our spiritual achievements, we consolidate them and allow them to grow, never ever go back on them, Allah says, you taste the sweetness of Iman, with these qualities. So we ask Allah to make us from those who can taste the sweetness of Iman. I would like all of us here, inshallah, to promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in our own little ways we improve. Even if we think, mashallah, we've done a lot of goodness, we can improve. I can improve. Starting with me, I can improve a lot. And I know that. And this is why I'm always a person open to criticism. Constructive criticism is a game I play, mashallah. It's something I really enjoy. Like some enjoy football, I really love it. The other day, someone came up to me and I was at an Amish conference. Association of Muslim Schools Conference in South Africa and I have spoken and one brother came to me with a note and I read it. He says, Sheikh, you don't know how to read the Quran. I said, Jazakallah khair. You know, meaning thank you very much. Like, and I hoped that I sat with him and he would have told me but I didn't want to insult him and I looked into what he had to say. And subhanAllah, I was thankful to Allah that at least someone thinks I don't know how to read. SubhanAllah. What does it do to me? It should motivate me to read a bit better, to try, to listen, to see, to check. No matter how many ijazat you might have, it doesn't mean you're a perfect. It does not. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. For your information, the way I speak, I want to tell you something now that we're ending. I have a father who's a perfectionist. And when I was young, he used to tell me to speak clearly, speak in such a way that your first letter and the last letter are as clear as each other. And he made sure it happened. And he made sure when we read the Quran it was clear. And he made sure the accent was internationally understood. It was neither this way nor that way. You know what I mean? <laughs> so basically, when that happened over years, over years, people said, that you speak so clearly. Well, alhamdulillah, Allah grant my father good health. He's just returned from Hajj, I believe he's not too well. I've got a phone call today. But in Allah grant him Jannah, meaning Allah grant him Jannah ultimately. And at the same time, us as well. The reason I make mention of this is those who feel bad when they are corrected will never ever more progress in life. Sometimes you tell someone, brother, you know what, I think you could have done this better. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You should, you know, it's like sometimes with the food, sorry sisters, I had to give this example. You say, you know, the salt is slightly less. Well, next time you can do the salt. Well, that's a typical answer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to split this. We don't want that. And another thing is, brothers, I know I've given a salt example, it's not important. Just take, pick it up as much as you need to carry. You know, that's better for you, inshallah. It's, it's more long lasting. So, Zakat al I think we will be enjoying the meals here. I'm ready to seek your leave. I've got another appointment just now. And inshallah, I hope and I pray that we've met here for the sake of Allah and that we have received the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, it is an honor for me to be standing in front of people who are much older than me and people whom I'm sure are doing sterling work of deen. People who are 
most probably more love by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than I am. Any one of you, there might be a single deed that you've done in your life that Allah loves much more than all the deeds of mine put together. So we do not belittle each other. We need each other. You pray for me, we pray for you, inshallah. We pray for the Ummah and we pray for humanity at large. Zakallah khairu sallallahu wa sallam wa barakah ala nabi Muhammad wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakah.